So this clip right here pretty much epitomizes not only baseball in 2020, but really all of life in 2020. This happened in the Orioles Nationals game yesterday, and the Nationals ground crew was just not able to do their job. And it wasn't even that they weren't able to do their job, the tarp was just being very uncooperative. This was only a glimpse of the madness and craziness that we did see over this past weekend. So I'm Nick O'Dwyer here for the 10th inning, giving you the biggest things that happened this past weekend in Major League Baseball. So if y'all enjoy this video, leave a like on If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. We started off today with an injury, and this would be for the Pittsburgh Pirates first baseman, Philip Evans. Philip Evans, up to this point in the season, was actually one of the feel-good stories in the league and one of the bright spots in the Pirates so far. He was batting 359 with a 932 OPS and 9 RBIs on the season. He signed a minor league contract with the Pirates over the offseason, and with everything that's happened so far this year, he ended up making the roster, was playing, was really their best player up to this point. Then came the injury. Miguel Cabrera was at the plate. He hit a fly ball into foul territory in right field. So you have Evans running back to get the ball. Then right fielder Gregory Polanco coming in to get the ball. Evans was running backwards. It should have been Polanco's ball the whole way. And Evans was trying to veer out of the way at the end when he finally saw Polanco. But there was some kind of miscommunication there. Whether Polanco wasn't saying anything. Whether Evans just wasn't listening to it. Some kind of miscommunication there, but they ended up colliding with each other, and Philip Evans will now be out for the rest of the 2020 season. After colliding with him, Evans went down, and he was not moving. He was unconscious for a little bit. He, he would finally regain consciousness, but they ended up taking him out on a stretcher, and Evans would suffer a concussion and a fractured jaw. If you want to say some good news out of this, though, Philip Evans was in good spirits later in the hospital, and there should be a full recovery by Evans. Obviously not this season. He will be out for the rest of the season. I've said this before and I'll say it again. It really sucks to see a player get injured. You never want to see any other player get injured. Especially as a player. As a fan, you have some crazy fans that like seeing it. But this one hurts not only for Pirates fans, but really for the whole MLB. Because you never want to see someone miss the remainder of the season due to something like this. And speaking of missing the remainder of the season, let's not talk about the St. Louis Cardinals. What is going to happen with the St. Louis Cardinals? Are they going to play again? The most likely answer will be yes, they're going to play again. It'd be pretty weird if there were only 29 teams playing this year. But this only comes a day after another player on the team tested positive for the virus. That makes it now 17 overall members of the team, 10 players, 7 staff members have tested positive for this. And this latest one is Lane Thomas. The Cardinals will now have missed 13 games over the past two weeks, and they have not played since July 29th. So as of right now, this is already worse than the Miami Marlins. They're going on two weeks without playing baseball. They will surpass two weeks without playing baseball. So the question now becomes, what is going to happen with the Cardinals the rest of the season? In order to play all 60 games this season, they would have to play 55 games in 48 days. And that just doesn't seem possible. So the MLB will have to make a decision with the Cardinals whether or not they will play 60 games. And if they don't play 60 games, how the NL Central will be decided. Will it be decided based off win percentage? How? Because honestly, I think that's a little unfair, but that's not my job. My job is to not figure it out. That's why I'm not given solutions right now. If it was my job, I would think of something. But that's not my job. That's Major League Baseball's job to find out what the best solution is what solution is fair to everyone? Because there's never going to be a perfect solution in place. 55 games in 48 days, that's not fair. Based off win percentage, that's not totally fair. So how are they going to figure it out? The one thing I will say the MLB is doing a good job with is that they are making sure that the Cardinals are shut down after these positive tests, that no gains will be happening. Therefore, no exposure for other teams coming in there playing. That's one thing I will agree. Good job. By Major League Baseball. We start getting to the funny stuff now in Major League Baseball over this past weekend and that video that you saw at the beginning of this video was from the Nationals Orioles game on Sunday. In all honesty the Orioles should have a sweep. I think it's kind of foolish that they don't have a sweep. They should have been able to sweep the Nationals. However by rule that's not how it works. The Nationals were struggling in the game. They were losing 5-2 against the Orioles. Then they just started pouring in the sixth inning. Okay ground screwed it out there. Should be no problem, right? 
St. Jude. Yeah, it was a massive problem, and while I was actually watching it, it was kind of strange to me that they actually stayed on the game while they were putting the tarp out, because usually, most TV stations, they cut to commercials when the grounds crew goes out there to put the tarp on, because, as you think, there should be no problem getting the tarp on. But there was a problem. They kept it on there, and honestly, I thought it was really funny. But kind of like Ben McDonald in the Orioles broadcast booth said, it's funny, but it's really not funny. Like, looking at it, it's really funny, obviously, but you also have to think about what these guys on the field are going through. They just got embarrassed, basically, now on national TV. It wasn't a nationally televised game. But now that story has gone all throughout the nation, everyone's seen it, everyone's just making fun of this crew. And everyone wants to place blame on somebody. But really, why was that tarp rolled up so badly the way it was? That tarp was never going to go out easy, especially when it's pouring like it was. And it was pouring so badly, the field was unplayable after that. It took about 14 minutes for them to finally get the tarp off. And again, I thought it was really funny. I was laughing. But I also know if I was in that same situation, I would not be laughing because it's not funny. So now the game's suspended and will be picked up this Friday in Camden Yard where the Nationals will be the home team and they will pick up where they left off. But according to rule, this actually was the right thing to do. I don't personally agree with it. But this was the right thing. According to Rule 7.02a, a game shall be suspended that must be completed at a future date if the game is terminated for any of the following reasons. 3. Light failure, malfunction of, or unintentional operator error in employing a mechanical or field device or equipment under the control of the home club, e.g. a retractable roof, a tarpaulin, or other water removal equipment. So therefore, by rule, this actually was the correct decision. I think it's a little bit ridiculous, but this was the correct decision by rule. So now let's go to another instance where, again, by rule, it should have been ruled something else than it was, therefore going against what the MLB rulebook say. And this would be Joe Adele in the Angels game against the Rangers. Should it have been ruled a four-base error? Well, no. According to rule, no, it should not have. But let's see how we got here first. There was a fly ball hit, and he badly misjudged it. It bounced off his glove, and it wasn't even a jump and play at the fence. It just hit off his glove, went over the fence. Originally, they did rule it as a home run, but now it's ruled as a four-base error. So which is the correct way to look at it? Well, it's actually the home run. It should be marked a home run, even though, honestly, I believe it should be marked as an error. I actually think that they ruled it correctly, but according to rule, it should be a home run. In Rule 6.09d, a fair ball passes over a fence or into the stands at a distance from home base of 250 feet or more. Such hit entitles the batter to a home run when he shall have touched all the bases legally. Or Rule 6.09h, any fair ball is deflected by the fielder into the stands or over the fence into foul territory, in which case the batter shall be entitled to advance to second base. But if deflected into the stands over the fence in fair territory, the batter shall be entitled to a home run. So again, by rule, this should be marked a home run. I understand that it came off his glove, and honestly, it should be marked as an error because he didn't jump or anything. But by rule, this should be a home run. But either way, not a good start to the rookie's career. This will be something, like Jose Canseco, lasts with him forever, no matter how good of a player he becomes. Then we go to Oakland, where the Oakland Athletics and the Houston Astros saw a bench clearing brawl that will see some heavy fines, I'm assuming, at least based off what MLB said they were going to do in 2020. But in the bottom of the seventh inning, benches did clear when Ramon Laureano was hit by a pitch for the second time in the game by pitcher Humberto Castellanos. Now, Castellanos has never made it above double A in his pitching career. He's on the roster because, again, 2020 is weird. And I understand Ramon Laureano. He was hit for the second time in the game. He used to be on the Houston Astros. But this is really both people's fault here. So Laureano, after he got hit for the second time off a breaking ball that hit his back, he went out a bit, started chirping at Castellanos, kind of gesturing towards him, saying, hey, this is how you pitch. I don't know exactly what he was saying, but he was doing that. So then he goes down to first base. Astros hitting coach Alex Cintron from the top of the dugout starts chirping back at Laureano and... I don't know what was said. Only they actually know what was said. People who were close enough know what was said. But no one who was close enough actually decided to comment. So we can always speculate what was said. But something was said enough for Loriano to start going after it. And Astros players, they wanted to defend their coach. So Alex Cintron, 
kind of got pushed to the back. You can say he went and hide, but if you actually saw the video, he did get pushed back. Not saying he wanted a fight anyway. I don't think he did want to fight, but he got pushed back. Loriano did end up getting ejected from the game. After the game, though, Bob Melvin, the Oakland Athletics manager, had to say on the comment, he said the blame for the incident shouldn't be solely on Loriano based on the offensive words that were coming from the Astros' dugout. TV replays do show Cintron yelling at Loriano. Again, we don't actually know what was said. I do agree with Melvin here. Loriano should not be the only one getting blame placed on him, and I don't think he is. I think everybody is saying both players are at fault here. Most are kind of, you know, pitching on Cintron because the Astros. People like to make fun of the Astros right now, but it's both people's fault. You're a professional athlete. You're a professional baseball player. You got to learn how to have some cool. At the same time, you're a professional hitting coach. You used to be a professional athlete. You have to know what to say and what not to say. You have to know the right things to say to get under someone's skin and the wrong things to say to get under someone's skin. I think he said the wrong things, but again, we don't actually know. But according to the operations manual for the 2020 season, fighting and instigating fights are strictly prohibited. Players must not make physical contact with others for any reason unless it occurs in normal and permissible game action. Violations of these rules will result in severe discipline consistent with past precedent, and discipline shall not be reduced or prorated based on the length of the season. So do expect Loriano to get some kind of fine and suspension here, as well as Alex Cintron and Dustin Garneau as he was the catcher who tackled Loriano when he was coming from the bench. So expect them to see some fines, some suspensions, and let's see what they actually mean by serious, because anything that the Astros players get for this will be more than they got for cheating in 2017. Just think about that. And I'll end today's video off with Cleveland Indians pitcher Zach Plesak. Zach Plesak was sent home on Sunday after going out with his friends on Saturday night while they were in Chicago. Now Plesak had just pitched before that game and he actually had a very good outing and he grew up an hour away from where the game was so him and some friends decided to go out for a little bit. In a normal year, in a normal time, this would be no problem. In 2020, when there are protocols all over the place, this was not the right time to do that. So after being sent home, Zach Plesak did send out an apology for the team. And it says, I would like to apologize to my teammates, the entire Cleveland organization, and all of our fans for my action Saturday evening. I realize I made a poor choice to leave the hotel, which broke protocols and could have endangered other people. And could have endangered other people. I understand in these times of uncertainty, I need to be more vigilant and responsible, and I am determined to earn my teammates' forgiveness and get back to work. As of right now, Plesak has to at least quarantine for 72 hours before he will be permitted back. I'm honestly surprised it's not longer, but that's how long he will have to quarantine for that. It could end up being longer, but either way, he made a mistake. It looks like he knows he made a mistake, but it'll be interesting what happens when he gets back to the team, if he'll face any punishments from teammates, from coaches. I don't know. We'll have to see. But that's what happened over the weekend. Again, it's been a crazy weekend in Major League Baseball. But I'll see everybody tomorrow for Nick O'Dwyer and the 10th inning. See ya.